First, we're joined by Chris Kenny. Hey, now. What How's up, your holiday, Chris? Chris? How you doing? It was good, good. holiday? It was a good Easter weekend. Yeah. I wish we didn't have the snow this morning. No, it's but unbelievable. I, I thought it was April, but maybe, Honestly. I'm, maybe I'm mistaken. No, 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 you're <laughs> maybe, good. Maybe it's a me problem. No, Mother no Nature's April mistake. Fools. Oh, okay. There's no right. April Fool's? No, oh, okay. we a little The joke is on us, though. <laughs> yeah, it's nasty here in New York City right now. Uh, the NFL draft now less than four weeks away. The presumptive favorite to be drafted number one overall is Sam Darnold, the presumptive favorite to draft him number one overall, the Cleveland Browns. Well, they have the first pick. That's what happens when you don't win any football games. However, according to someone who was nearly a number one pick himself, Darnold should try to avoid the Browns at all costs. Take a listen. If I were Sam Darnold and I have this leverage right now and I know I'm going to be the first round in the first pick in the NFL draft, I'm going to my agent and I'm saying, Get, don't figure out a way for me not to go to Cleveland. Eli Manning this for me because tell me this, if he goes there and they triple their win total this year, right? And they win three games next year. How is Hugh Jackson not get fired? Right. So now you have a new head coach, probably a new system. And now you're behind the eight ball even more. Everybody talks about what a great guy he is, personable, blue collar, but don't let that get in the way of you being successful. Chris Kenny, that's very interesting advice, and some would call it questionable advice. What do you think about what Ryan Leaf said there? Well, anytime you have somebody like Ryan Leaf giving those kind of comments, you have to consider the source. Yeah. I don't know if he has that much credibility when talking about Sam Donald's situation, but I can understand a little bit of his concerns about what's been happening over, uh, over at Cleveland over the course of the past two decades. When you look at how many quarterbacks that they've had since 1999, I think it's 28 different starting quarterbacks. So you can't ignore the history. But that being said, I don't think that that is an indicator of what this new regime is going to do under John Dorsey and Hugh Jackson. I think you have to give them a chance. And if you look at how John Dorsey likes to build football teams, he believes in having that organic approach. He came from the Green Bay Packers. Mm -hmm. And so he was a part of the regime when they drafted Aaron Rodgers. He was the director of college scouting there. And then when you look at when he went over to the Kansas City Chiefs, he was a part of bringing Alex Smith there to kind of stabilize that quarterback position for them. They made the playoffs three out of the last five years. So I think you can say that John Dorsey knows what he's doing in terms of being able to identify talent, especially at the quarterback position. So you have to give this regime a chance. They have a lot of draft capital. They've got two picks in the first five this year. And then, of course, they've got five picks, I believe, in the first two rounds. Yeah. So when you start talking about having that type of ammunition, I don't know that it's necessarily a bad situation going to Cleveland because I think they're going to try to put things back on the right track. No, Cece, while we were watching the clip, I I saw your face. Like the the idea that tell me if if I'm reading your mind right, the idea that Sam Darnold is the presumptive, definite number one pick. You reject that idea. Oh, absolutely. I know he's not. I know he's not. I know he's not ranked number one on everyone's board. And. I got a good feeling that he's not ranked number one on Cleveland's board. So when we introduce the segment, I don't believe he is the perennial overall number one pick. I believe Josh Allen is. I believe that Cleveland likes Josh Allen because of Tyrod Taylor having him there. Now, if they thought that the rookie had to start right now, they might go with Darnold. But based on what I'm hearing is Sam Darnold is not the number one pick. So it, it, you can't even entertain that philosophy unless you were the outright number one guy and everyone thought that. And that was the case with Eli. Yes. Right? Everyone knew. And by the way, that was also the case with John Elway. Right? The, the, yes. That everyone knew those guys were going number one. And John one. Elway's situation was different because he had Major League Baseball. Mm -hmm. All right? He had something else to really fall back on compared to just the idle threat of, I don't want to go there and I'm not going to show up. What did you think of it when Eli did it? You were just, you had recently retired. You had just, you had just left pro football. You're obviously covering it, I think, inside the NFL at the time. What did you think of it when he liked it? I thought, I thought Archie Manning did a great job. I really did. I thought he knew his son and the situation better. We called him the first family of football. He did a great job with Peyton's career not getting involved. But I believe in this situation, San Diego, the New York football giants, they did the right thing. And sending Eli into the tougher market compared to going to California. Now, that was a very, very tough decision. It's not something I would agree with a lot, but I felt like the Mannings did the right thing. Would you agree with, it? What about with the Sam Darnold did it? Well, Sam Donald can't do it. 
because he's not the perennial first pick. And I believe that someone's going to win in Cleveland. I believe there's someone going to put a statue Agreed. out front. Now, when I got recruited, I was the number one wide receiver in the country. Second receiver was Michael Irvin. Michael Irvin decided to go to Miami. He was from Fort Lauderdale. At that time, people had told me, my family, brother, and everything, you shouldn't go to Ohio State. They've never had all-American wide receiver. I said, well, eventually they're going to throw the ball. When someone shows up on that campus in Columbus, <laughs> they're going to throw the ball to them. And that happened to be me. And I happened to be the first wide receiver there and have a Buckeye tree now to be able to prove that. Someone is going to win in Cleveland. Now, I don't believe these guys have the type of personality, nor are the arm talent to be able to make that type of demand on the Cleveland Browns. Well, that's what I wanted to get both your guys' perspective on, is let's, so whether or not Sam Darnold is the prohibitive number one pick, would other teams outside of Cleveland downgrade him, judge him, question whether or not he has some mental side of the game or some fortitude side of the game if he is saying, eh, I don't feel good about that situation because while you didn't, while you weren't critical of Eli, Eli's situation was different because he was going from he was forcing his way out of warm weather to cold weather. He was forcing his way from what was at the time considered the easier division to the tougher division. Like Eli seemingly was making his life harder. If anyone were to say whether it was Josh Rosen reportedly, and he has since denied it, or just advice given to Sam Darnold saying that hey, you shouldn't want to play there. What I'm wondering is, would a team like the Giants, who are sitting at two and might draft a quarterback, would a team like the Jets, who we know are going to draft a quarterback at three, would they look at it and say, hold on, this makes me question who this guy actually is, because when I hear people downgrading Josh Rosen because he has interests outside of football, right? When I hear people downgrading guys because they think they don't love the game or need the game, non-football things knock you down people's draft boards all the time. I would think the reason this would be bad advice for Sam Darnold is because, uh, say you force your way out of Cleveland. Say, 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 that, say that scenario exists. All of a sudden, are the Jets thinking differently about you? Are the, are the Arizona Cardinals, or whomever it is, whomever is going to trade up to the next, the next quarterback, are they thinking differently about you? Do you think that's a real thing? No, I don't think that's a real thing from a football perspective, but I will say this. If a draft prospect goes with that kind of move, it's going to bring that kind of scrutiny along with it. It's going to be controversial. There's no way around that. So if you're Sam Donald, do you want to have that added pressure going to whatever other market that you're drafted by on your rookie season and still having to deal with the learning curve that is playing quarterback in the NFL because it's a completely different game. I don't know that you necessarily want to do that if you're Sam Donald. And again, when we look at that Eli Manning situation where they forced that trade, that was more to do with the general manager and ownership and the problems that Archie had with the way that those guys did business out yes. in San Diego. I don't hear anybody complaining about how John Dorsey and Hugh Jackson does, does business in Cleveland. You heard about Sashi Brown and Paul DePodesta and that whole money ball approach that they tried with all those draft picks. It didn't work out. Now you got football guys in there trying to handle football business. I think you have to give them a chance. Man, I look at the top 10 <laughs> picks. Another thing I disagree with Ryan Leaf about is he talks about, well, if you don't play well, the coach going to get fired. Well, you look at the top 10 picks. Look at the franchise picking in the top 10. You tell me one of them franchise that's going to lose over the next three years and the coach is going to be there because I don't see one. They're in the top ten for a reason. In all these places, even the New York football giants, if they don't win there, that coach is not going to be there. So when you start talking about stability or lack of stability, man, this is the new NFL. There ain't no stability nowhere but in New England. Well, and I mean, you, you said New York Giants because they're picking two. What are the New York Jets who are picking three? Oh, I, do any, I need to discuss them? Right. The, I mean, <laughs> right. The, the, when we talk about coaches that go into the year, on the hot seat, I understand why a lot of people say Hugh Jackson, because they're one in 31 in their last two years, is going to is is on the hottest seat, if you will. But man, I mean, Todd Bowles' seat ain't exactly warm or ain't exactly cold. Like there's, to your point, there there are most coaches drafting the top of ten them are warm, bro. All right. the seats. But you said over three years, most he was worried about him getting fired after one year. Almost all of these guys. Newsflash: Pat Shermer, he ain't coached a game. OBJ ends up on video. His seat right now, if it wasn't snow outside, his seat be hot. Uh, he didn't coach one game. He hadn't lost one game. We should mention, which we didn't, this didn't come from Sam Darnold. He's not yeah. putting any part of this out here. This was something Ryan Leaf said on his advice. Heard. Yep. All right, Chris, stick around. Coming up, Malcolm Butler says the Pats would have won the Super Bowl had he played. Is he right? It's next on First Things First. He couldn't have hurt.